You're back with another one. This time we got top 10 anime that became masterpieces after just one episode. This is by Watch Mojo. I'm a little afraid to do some Watch Mojos because they, they be, you know, cutting, like making things get cut out. Not them specifically, but they be using footage that not everyone can use. So it just gets cut out. Same reason why I haven't done that My Hero review yet. Because My Hero, they be stingy with what you can use, like footage wise. Uh. This was not a request. I don't even know why I clicked on that. Yeah, so let's get to it. Make sure you like the video, comment, subscribe, by the way. I think I did that already Another down there, but you know. This is Ashley with Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 anime that became masterpieces. Why was that dude? Why is he looking at light like that, bro? Mind your business. That became masterpieces after just one episode. Yeah, Death Note is definitely going to be in here. I was hooked. <laughs> After episode one, I know what's not gonna be in here. Black Clover. Ain't nobody was hooked to Black Clover till like episode 15 or something, something like that. Okay, 15 might be a stretch. It was like episode six or something like that. Episodes that turned out to be a reflection of the greatness to come. Remember, everybody was annoyed as hell at Asta's voice. Let us know in the comments, and as always, you can catch me on playlist. Granted, if the first episode happened to feature Johan's reveal just as he started his killing spree, this would have shot up to number one. Where's the patient? They just brought him in. Dang. That being said, watching Dr. Tenma's unknowingly fatal decision to choose to perform life-saving surgery on a child as opposed to a political figure magnificently sets the stage for the horror to come. I have... I have a surgery to perform in the other room. Uh -huh. We are only given snippets of like y'all only got one doctor. They still succeed in laying one surgeon together as we see the fallout from his decision starts when fold. You know what they say about good intentions in hell, right? I'll save you, no matter what. Number nine, Bunny Drop. You sound mad familiar. Manga conclusion aside, this is one of the most heartwarming properties in the medium, giving us a father and daughter bond that would go on to bring an uncountable amount of feels. Disillusioned and just wading through his adult life, Daikichi changes two fates when he makes the decision to adopt his deceased grandfather's secret love child, hmm? giving them both a chance to find some sense oh, of happiness in their Ooh. life. Orange, Kuruka. The first episode may certainly be more on the somber side of things, but come on, look how cute Rin is. <laughs> <laughs> Number 8, Vinland Saga. Now this is what you call an animation flex. Very much the calm before the storm, this tale of Vikings and revenge not only contains one hell of an opening battle sequence, but does a stellar job of establishing the characters of both father and son. We have Tors, an enlightened yet beast of a man who has forsaken violence in order to protect his family and walk the path of a true warrior. And he we have ate Torfin, that arrow up. A naive youth obsessed with tales of adventures and romanticized Yum. versions of war. That's how you could tell it's a child's tale because look at the face on that uh their relationship on that thing compared to everyone else. Everyone looks realistic. It's just like childish. I like it though. I like it. He's got his mother's hair, I guess. Number seven, Ping Pong, the animation. The stakes really? may be pretty low, given we only see one major table tennis match in the whole episode, but the style of animation and setup between its two leads is still grandiose in execution. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I'm not watching this. Look at his animation. Lending itself to a bizarre yet invigorating portrayal of the sports, watching Smile and Peko slowly find their passion for it following their defeat at the paddle of a rival champion forms the bedrock of the story. You trash. It's a solid underdog story 
drenched in a holy unique no Epo might be on this was i don't know if, if that miata fight was episode one though if it was then then yes if not because that miata fight that's what hooked me i was but that might be like episode two or three death notes of course this is the first time I'm hearing light in Japanese. Oh my gosh. Like ever. That's what I was say, we were following light, so I, I'm going to say Messiah figure. Because that's the perspective that we were given. But yeah, he, for, on the real, he was a, a serial killer. No matter your opinions on his personal brand of justice, the way in which he utilizes the book of the Shinigami and seeing his hubris grow makes for an incredibly compelling viewing. Was it really... See, I'm getting on my philosophical stuff right now. <clears throat> Was it really uh, killing if he didn't do it himself? He, he, never, he never really physically harmed anybody he he you know he wrote their names in a book and theoretically things just happen so did did he really have power or was it the shinigami that did it it's philosoph philosophical time with diesel number five to your attorney. i'm also reaching of course he killed he killed millions that man light has a special seat in hell for himself <laughs> it's excellence in the way it conveys its emotional rawness within such a limited space of time is borderline unparalleled. <laughs> Even if you take away the supernatural aspect of a sentient orb, assuming the form of everything it touches, you still have a compelling relationship between a lonely boy and his wolf as they endeavor to seek out civilization and the soul-shattering realization that the world doesn't owe you any happiness. This one is shaping up to be a true star. <laughs> Number four, Maiden Abyss. While there was no way- That last one reminded me of A Whisker Away. I was watching on Netflix and like I never finished it. I got about half, like an, I have like an hour and a half, or an hour and 11 minutes left in it. And I was like, bro, turn this shit off. Like, <laughs> I was watching it with one of my friends. I was like, turn this shit off. It's stupid as hell. She turned into a cat to, and like, oh my gosh, she turned into a cat. And she's like considering giving up her human life to, to spend her rest of her life as a cat with this guy, this, like this boy. It was like, if you don't just confess to him, stop being a little coward. Like, bro, you were a cat to get close to, a and then you crazy. You were, cra you literally jumped off a second story, like second story uh, balcony because they were talking trash about about their friend acting weird, being around you. Who are, you're the reason why they're talking about him because he's like like putting up with your bulls. Like, oh my gosh, bro. I was, I was like, turn this shit off. I couldn't finish it. To predict the darkness that would follow via the introduction of Bondrude, our first time in the city overlooking the abyss was still a monumental one. <laughs> Them cheeks, bro. Sure, Them there may bounce. not have been much bite when compared to the rest of Reg and Rico's journey, but it still gave us the gorgeous visual of the new day rising over Orb, a taste of its creative designs and the instant chemistry between the naive cave raider and his cyborg companion. <laughs> and the rest is history. A very painful and uncomfortable history. Was she wearing a diaper? <laughs> Number three, Violet Evergarden. Okay. I'm not gonna lie, just the description had enough for, the, for it to be a masterpiece for me. Setting the tone in terms of both beauty and heartbreak, Violet's new life as an auto-memory doll came with an abundance of PTSD, 
upsetting flashbacks, and some of the most dazzling animated backdrops in recent memory. All of which was just the icing on the cake as we follow a former soldier trying to rebuild her life, while also attempting to comprehend human emotion and connection due to being raised as a living weapon. It was a stunning showcase of what was yet to come, with Violet taking her first steps towards understanding the meaning of the phrase, I love you. I want to know. Number 2, Neon Genesis Evangelion. Okay, I'm it's not going to lie. Time that Shinji got in the robots, the first time we saw an angel floating under the sun. I haven't seen 90% of these. And the first time we saw what a terrible father Gendo is. There was one I said in the beginning. While we could never have predicted the philosophical madness that would follow, the initial assaults of the Abrahamic creatures nonetheless presented us with amazing sci-fi world building along with some truly compelling battles. This episode sets up all the madness that is yet to come in the most perfect way. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings. Attack on Titan, yeah, that had to be number one. That took the world from episode one. That was a way to start a show. Back in 2013. There's no conspiracies, no war. That was so no long ago. The undercurrents that would go on to define it as a political thriller in its later seasons. Just a whole episode filled with horror and tragedy as Erin and the rest watch their home be consumed by ravenous man eating giants. While you can simply go over it with a fine tooth comb, searching for the smallest signs that give reference to future events, watching the colossal titan rise above the wall and snuff out hundreds of lives speaks volumes by itself, giving us a visceral introduction to a world that everyone has come to both fear and adore. That's gotta hurt like crazy though. I don't care how big you are, that's a solid wall. You literally just kicked a wall. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this. It's still gonna hurt. From one that's still gonna hurt. True. Alright, uh, I hope y'all enjoy. Like, comment, subscribe, and actually I'm going to see if uh Hajimino H A J I No Epo uh episode one What it ended with. Yeah, I don't care. That's that's fine. Right there. Oh okay, yeah, no, I was wrong. But I mean still. Still. This is this is a solid episode. It wasn't the Miata fight. I think the Miata fight was like episode two or something like that. Two or three. Yeah, because it was three, because he he was training all episode two. And then episode three, he brought him in for the Miata fight. And that, that was, you know, you always got to give a show at least three episodes. That's what I do. If it's not good within three episodes, I'm dropping it. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, sometimes I go a little bit farther because I'm like, I see potential. Like, it's not bad. But, like, if I'm bored within three episodes, I'm dropping it. Like, <laughs> whew, I gave Steins Gate, a, I gave Steins Gate ten episodes before I dropped that. Came back and then it got good right after that. Like <laughs> what the f I was so pissed. But um Yeah. Epo got like got amazing on episode three. I was already like gonna watch it and then episode three I was like, oh I'm I'm in this. I'm in this show's guts. But yeah. <laughs> I hope y'all enjoy. Like, comment, subscribe and I'm out. Peace.